إني ألقى الإيناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات. Look, the, the argument really is simple. Yeah, it's a really, it's, it's a beautifully simple argument. I'm saying that the universe is very complex. That if you look at the properties of the universe, as documented by theistic and atheistic cosmologists, they refer to a fine-tuning of the universe. So I've quoted you before, as I said, uh, Stephen Hawkins in A Brief History of Time, where he refers to this reality, he says, he calls it fine-tuning. And I talked about Martin Rees, who wrote a book called Just Six Numbers. And I want you to just one more time think about this. He, he, he details six numbers. All of these numbers, he says, describe yeah, the reality of the universe. These numbers are massive. I mean, they have so many digits. He said, had one of these numbers been different, the universe would not be able to facilitate human life and there would not be a fine-tuning of the universe. Or the universe could not exist in the way it does it, uh, at the moment, in the complex way it does. So we've agreed really that for the universe to have been around, yeah, and for us to suggest that it was a random generation would be really tantamount, the, the probability of this is zero, yeah? The probability of zero point, zero, like so many digits, and then I maybe one. Um, you, you said for the universe to be around. I don't think that's the case. I think it's the to universe be around tuned. as we understand yes. it and in a situation in the fine, which we can Yeah, okay. yes, that's exactly the point. So, yeah. what I'm saying is, when I when I discuss this with atheists, the point I always say is that if we t if we look around and see the intelligent design, then that must, I would say. That must re it must really follow that we say that must there must be an intelligent designer. Do you see what I mean? I see. I do see what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So so I would say that we that that assumes that, that humanity is the point of that design. I, I would have thought, which isn't like an the, the one that is. Okay, and this, so yeah. So the point of this uh, this universe is human life, which I don't think is supported by the vastness of the rest of the universe. And my point about the probability thing was, um, in the similar way I said it before, I know the probability is way higher, but a lottery draw, and as you said, the probability is way higher. Um, any probability of any numbers coming out is infinitesimally small. Yeah. If it were a million numbers in the lottery, it would be even smaller. Um, just because one happened in one draw doesn't mean it could. It wasn't random and it wasn't chance. And I say that I think to to say that this to say that this is the situation in which humans can exist suggests that humans is the point, which I think is an assumption. Right. Right. No, no. So you're saying that because my my argument rests on the fact that a human being is the sentient creature who is looking around himself yeah. and coming to conclusions. And you're saying. Really, it doesn't fit the bill to suggest that this human being is the only sentient creature, perhaps, in the vastness of the universe. No, not necessarily. I'm, I'm saying that um, were things slightly different, uh, that the six, well, one of the six numbers slightly different, Yes. everything could have been different, and that's, that's fine. It doesn't require... It doesn't require humanity to... Um, sorry, I didn't explain that very well at all. I'm saying that humans... Being alive is no evidence that things should couldn't have been different. Yeah, you know, I would. Agree. I mean, I don't disagree with your point. There. I mean, I'm not talking about. Look, when we talk about human beings, we are talking about biological creatures, yeah. physiological creatures, psychological creatures, in the context of the of the of the cosmos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My argument is about the cosmos. It's, it's, a, it's an argument based on like the the natural world we see around us. Yeah, yeah. Human beings are. The creatures, which basically, as we are doing now, we, we can't get around we can it. Consider the we are the, we're considering yeah. it, the universe, or analyzing, evaluating the universe, trying to find out how we fit into the universe. So really what I'm saying is, when we do do that, we realize that there's an incredible, there's an incredible pattern here. Had it been different, there would not be a fine tuning, according to the physicists and cosmologists. And we couldn't exist. And human life, or life wouldn't be, wouldn't exist. Do you see what I mean? I don't think that doesn't necessarily follow. I think human life wouldn't exist. Well, any life. I don't think that necessarily follows. Go on. Um, there's no reason to think that there aren't many other probabilities. That's not what I'm saying, by the way. These are the, these are the references. I mean, so that, I, no, these yeah. are the physicists. That yeah. Are um, yeah. No, I realise that. I think our life could not exist as it is now 
but I think there, there's no reason to suggest that that life is the, the point of the universe and that there might be many other probabilities where things are different in which other things could happen. The whole universe could be different. Just because it happened this way is not evidence to suggest that yeah, someone but, chose this way. No, no, well, it happened this way and this way facilitated human life. Yeah. Had it not happened this way, yes, human life. human life wouldn't be facilitated. So what I'm saying, had the numbers been different, yeah. we wouldn't be around to talk about this. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that you've got such a probability that suggests that the universe couldn't be in a random generation is, tanta is really an evidence, is a testament to the reality that the universe could not have been a random generation. Do you see what I mean? I see what you're saying, yeah. but, I, but I would reject it for the same reason, because you're saying that if things were otherwise, we wouldn't exist. We do exist, therefore someone tuned those conditions. Something uh, designed those conditions. Yeah. So, no, now, no, I, so I'm saying so, 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 that the one universe... More, one does, more time, so yeah. say that one more time. So you're saying... So, you, so my understanding of what yep. you said is that um, in a, if, if, if everything were different, yep. then, the, then we couldn't exist. Yes. Because we do exist, it suggests um, an intelligent tuning of those circumstances. No, what, let me just tweak, yeah, 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 tweak yeah, yeah, the argument. <laughs> Not because we do exist, because the conditions, the the conditions uh, in the cosmos allowed human ex to, uh, humans to exist. Right. Which is a little bit different. So we, we don't yeah. need to exist, right? right? But the conditions were such that it can facilitate human beings living on planet Earth or any other planet. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that is what I'm talking about. So it's not, I'm not talking here about the philosophical reality of human being. I'm talking about the, the, the physical reality of the universe. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah so this argument is strictly yeah, a mathematics slash uh, physics argument, you could say. Yeah. Looking at nature around you and, yeah, yeah. and, and deducing yeah. that it's probabilistically almost, as we said, impossible yeah. for this to be a random generation. And you agreed with that? Mm, no, not necessarily. I think, um, I think this is one, one result of a million different probabilities, like you, more than a million, a million, million, million different probabilities yeah, so you're, of so, those six so numbers. You're, so you're talking about uh, multiverse theory? No, 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 not again. No, um, sorry, I said not again because I said it last time. Yeah. I don't mean that at all. I mean that, similar to the lottery draw, a lottery draw with a million numbers. So each one are of you them suggesting would be that each universe, there was a million, million universes? No, I'm, so saying, there's, I'm saying there's one lottery draw. Okay, with so a million one universe. Numbers. One, one lottery draw. Yep. The probability of it coming out in any order was infinitesimally small. Yes. But that doesn't imply that someone fixed the draw. That just means the probability was... Uh -huh, uh -huh, do, you see what, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, 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 yes. No, so I get I'm the not saying there were a million draws no, and multiverse. No, no, no. I'm I saying get a single you. I get draw you. was improbable. So do you want to live your life? Yeah? I mean, really, really, really. This is my question, because you seem like a reasonable person, honestly. I like your argument. It makes sense. I like yours, it's one of the better ones I've heard. Thank you. But what, it's a very simple argument. What I was saying is that what I've heard that you've just said now is that the universe, yes, really you compared it to a lottery ticket. So the, 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 the fact that the universe could have been randomly generated the way it is, is like the same thing as going, going and basically doing the lottery and getting all your numbers right. But we know, me and you, that the, the actual probability is much greater than that, yeah? Oh yeah, so I'm, so I'm saying if it were a lottery draw yeah. and there were a million numbers rather yeah, yeah. than just... Just six or ten or whatever, or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I don't want to do the lottery. No, no, but no. Is that, <laughs> the I'm probability's never... too small. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, it, yeah, you see the point? Yeah, yeah. But you're living your life... Yeah. Okay, think about this please, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah? You're living your life as an atheist, suggesting that very thing. That there was a big lottery number of a million numbers, not just 12, yeah, yeah. yeah? And that someone guessed all of those numbers right. That's tantamount to what you believe in. I guess so, yeah. Yes, okay. Now, do you see that... I'm not saying... No, I'm not... Sorry, if I may just quickly. Yeah. I'm... Someone guessed. I'm saying that a draw happened. Yes, yes, yes. And so just because the draw... Organs. Yes. Sorry? Organs have guessed it. It's ten times the power of 500. Hawkins yeah. have yesterday said that the calculation for it is ten times 500 that, that being a mistake. Yeah. Ten times 500. Can and to, to the power of 500. The power yeah. of 500. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm the saying it, I'm, I'm not, I'm not um, disagreeing Just with the possibility, the probability. Just because it's a mistake, not because anything else. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's a mistake. I'm agreeing that the probability is infinitesimally small. But I'm saying just because it's small doesn't imply that it didn't happen. Just like okay. how one lottery draw yes, yes, doesn't it. imply so something. So what I'm saying it. is you're, you're admitting that it's so infinitesimally small, but then you're saying that it must have happened anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but doesn't that, isn't that quite, sorry, but yeah, you're an intelligent yeah. guy. Yeah. Isn't
isn't that quite ridiculous? Because it, it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more appropriate here to say instead of believing in a lot, of, you know, it's really like this. If I have a big bag, yeah, of a million, a billion letters, different letters, yeah, and I throw it, yeah, and it becomes like Shakespeare. Yeah. Shakespeare's Macbeth. Monkeys and is there. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I said I've got a big bag here of a billion letters, I'm going to throw it on the streets. The yeah? Of I'm going to do it right now. One second. Tomorrow, Let me throw tomorrow. it. <laughs> yeah. And then it actually becomes Macbeth. Would you? Would you? Well, Macbeth and maybe Hamlet as well, and you know, yeah. Romeo and Juliet and all of it. And all that. And you know, the way he said it, word for word, letter for letter. You know, it would not be something you would put your money on, right? No, but I would say if you did throw the same bag of letters, yeah. any combination in which they landed is is as probable as it landing in Shakespeare's. If, even if it's random, any any order. Yeah, but well, that's not that's not what I'm saying. So yeah, I'm saying so to believe that yeah, if I threw it and it becomes well, I'm Hamlet. not saying I'm not saying we don't make sense either. Yes, so so it's, you you wouldn't, you wouldn't take this kind of probability. No, but I would. You wouldn't put your life on this, would you? Or it, it resulting in Hamlet? Yeah. No, of course. Not. You would not. No. no. So okay, if you wouldn't put your life on it, mm-hmm. what? so why are you putting your afterlife on it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because because what you what you're doing is you're implying that we are as designed yeah. and detailed and complicated as as Hamlet, and I no, reject that idea. I'm saying as a person, you mean. And I've just used the first, probability right? kind of. Be, yeah, no. But what I'm saying is, when you throw the sack of letters. It's going to land in an order, and each one of those orders is makes sense. as uh, no, it doesn't make sense. Not necessarily. Oh, it's it can land in a random yeah, order, yeah. and each one, is any order it could land in, the probability is very small. Yes, yes, but yes. it did land in yes, one yes, of them, yes. just like but our I'm universe if, did exist. Yeah, no, no, but that's that's not an argument against what I'm saying at all. Do you see what I mean? No, do you know, do you know sure. why it's not? Tell me. Let me tell you why it's not. If I say to you, look, the the lottery numbers are you know 12, 15, 9, 6, 4, 5, 6, 8. But then you know, someone says it could have been one, three, four, nine, seven, eight, nine, and the probability of it being this and this is like this. And so it's that the same. yeah, it's the same. But it doesn't mean I'm not talking about the fact that they've all got the same probabilities. I'm saying, yeah, what's the probability of the numbers being this? Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't care about the rest of the probability. I'm just talking about one variable here, which small. is the universe. So it's very small. Fine, sure. The fact that in the in the first instance. That all of the probabilities were the same of it of it landing in whatever sequence doesn't negate the fact that the probability is so small of it uh, landing on a particular yeah. sequence. Yeah. So I'm talking about the particular, this particular, yeah. which is the universe here in this yeah. in this uh, analogy. The, the, according to as we said, cosmologists and physicists, the probability of it being a random generation is infinitesimally small. Yeah. So we have to think to ourselves now: How did the universe come? to be what it is. Now we have two or three different options. One option is to maintain that it was a random generation, which is, as we said, a ridiculous, kind of like impossible option. I don't, I don't, I don't accept that. Okay, but, but forget, forget the yeah, word yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but I would say almost impossible. You, we agreed, yeah? For it to be random, yeah? To, be, to do it and facilitate no, no, no. human life. No, no, it's almost impossible that it did end up like this. Yes, but yes. that doesn't mean it's impossible that it was random. Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. Yeah, so I'm saying that it's... I'm saying the probability of any result was as tiny as this result. Okay, but we're talking about... Of the things that we're talking about is fine-tuning of the universe, yeah? So I'm saying that what is the probability that the universe was fine-tuned for, for any human life or any life to exist? And we're saying that the probability of that reality... Which would which would uh, which would mean no, no, that we as human beings are here. From Big Bang, they've studied it and they yeah. did the study and they they say they might be like the only solution they have now. Even believe in God or believe there's other other planets like our planet. And this probability is large number, 16 million. Yeah. Zeros, man, zeros. To have a probability, we have same planet like ours, and we don't have. Just because they don't want to believe there is a God, there is creation. Mm. If the world was created one second faster than it is, it wouldn't. We wouldn't have a planet. If it was like um, late one second, we wouldn't have a planet. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that, so we would have had so something you've got, else. You've got three choices. Yeah. I'm saying we wouldn't we would, have anything. No, we, we would, wouldn't. But some, something, else, something else, something else would have happened. No, it could have. It could have been imploded on, upon itself. That's yeah. the point. That's, what he said is an interesting point. But that's as improbable as anything else. Yeah. As us being. What I'm saying is. So you've got this probability randomness. Yeah. I either suggest that it was a random generation, which is tantamount to believing in impossibilities. Number two, you can say evolved, which is a biological thing, which right. people like Richard Dawkins are starting to, uh, to, to, to favour now because they realise the difficulty in saying it's random. They really do. 
atheists realized the difficulty in saying that the universe was a, was a random generation. People like Richard Dawkins come in and actually have started to posit a theory where the universe evolved. Now, biology and physics are two separate sciences. He's a biologist, he's yeah, yeah. superimposing his field onto another field. Yeah, yeah. There is no evidence whatsoever that the universe was evolved. So we couldn't use that as an argument unless we found evidence for it. The third thing is to suggest that there was an intelligent designer right. that had the creative potential to change the situation and to, and to al align the universe the way it's been aligned. Yeah. Now what I'm saying is that this of the three cho choices that we have is the most logical, rational, yeah, choice that we can go for. Do you see what I mean? So you're saying that intelligent design of those three options is the most... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do see what you're saying, and I think it's a really strong argument. But for me, I think you're too soon to dismiss the random thing for the same reasons I've said before. And then if I Sorry? was to ask you another... 2016, we reach everywhere. Yeah, but I was going to say another point. Yeah, yeah. Which was, so you've got the, you've got the, um, the infinitesimally random, but then you've got another problem as well. The question is, we know from, we know, right, from the empirical reality that zero plus zero can never equal one. In other words, something can never come from nothing. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a problem here, one problem. It's more Shakespeare, it's King Lear. <laughs> nothing can come from nothing, see, we we keep speak talk, again. We, we, we keep talking about Shakespeare. First we'll talk about Hamlet, yeah, yeah. then Romeo and Juliet, <laughs> now King Lear. But what I was going to say to you, really, was zero plus zero can never be The Quran says, in chapter number 52, verse number 36, it says, Have they been created from nothing? Or were they themselves the creators of themselves? So in other words, do you maintain, would you maintain that we, we, or the universe, came from nothing? I kind of maintain that it's a null question because um, I believe that time started at the same time the universe started. So to say what was there before doesn't make sense because there was no time to be before in, okay. if that makes sense. In philosophy, mm -hmm. there are two theories of time. There's the A theory of time and there's the B theory of time. The A theory of time suggests that before the universe there was time. Yes? Okay. And that this was linear, etc. The B theory of time doesn't suggest the same notion. For you to now say that there wasn't time before the universe, what is required from you is evidences. Do you see what I mean? It's, so I, can I, you provide? I, yeah, I think so. Go on. That is the theory that says everything has a reason. Everything in this world has a reason. If this like uh, tree went up because of the reason, because of the water, because um, of the looking up. So he's saying every uh, has has a every effect has a cause, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so so my cause has a reason. This is the first thing you must ask my, yourself. So my my evidence for the idea that time is not linear is that it changes dependent on other things like position in space and speed. Yeah, but that's in the context of the universe. Yeah. So we're talking about something which is outside of the context of the universe, which we have no knowledge of. Sorry, oh, as in before the universe. Yeah. yeah. So what you, because we are limited as a, as as human beings yeah. to the five senses, and empiricism is limited to those five yeah. senses. But, but, but well, when you come out of the universe, you've got a completely different context. Yeah. Could I not? Would I not say that the, no, the nothing that can come from nothing argument is an excellent one? Yes. But I would not. Does it not extend similarly to God? If nothing can, then God created the universe, which is a fine. But then where did God come from? It's a nice argument. I, I was happy that you said that. Yeah. I would say there, that it was necessary for there to be a deity or an, endless, an entity, right? Because yeah. deity has religious connotations. It was necessary for there to have been an entity that was the first. Can, I, can that entity not be the universe? Can that entity not be the universe? I'm just saying that that entity yeah. had to have certain qualities which we've discussed before. We're talking about the fine tuning. Design and, yeah. Intelligence, the creative capacity to change the situation, etc. Remember, when you said to me, Can you prove God according to the Quran? I was completely honest with you. I said that, you know, there's so many attributes of God in the Quran. Yeah? Al Wadud, the loving, the merciful, Ar Rahman, Rahim, the great, most gracious, the most. I cannot deductively prove each of those. Yeah? In fact, we believe that you could, this is something which cannot be proven from the, from the intellect, mm -hmm. that it has to be taken from the text. But there are some things. Some of God's attributes, like his ilm or his knowledge, uh, like his his qudra or his strength or his ability to change, yeah, to, that we can conclude are deductible. You see what I mean? Yeah, I see what you mean. So I'm not saying to you that, look, I'm, what I said to you here, 
was that the ones or the attributes that we can conclude safely are rational, concludable things. You see, is that God is all known, or God is, has knowledge, has the, enough knowledge to change the situation. That he had the creative capacity to change that situation. Yeah. And yes, that he had the ability as well to do that. Now this was all required. And he was the first, that he was the first, and then there was nothing before him. These are the attributes but I, but of God I, we can confirm. I would say surely again nothing can come from nothing. If you if that argument is acceptable. Now we say that God was always the, there. But now I could say that the universe was always there. But that's life. something which is unscientific. Not really. The singularity. Yeah, because the singularity yeah. it posits that the universe had a beginning. At the same time, time had a beginning. Yeah, yeah but so it still had time. a beginning. Yeah. So we know because of the fact that the universe is expanding, that the universe must have had a beginning. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the universe was not the first thing that was in existence because there must have been something before the universe. Now the question is, therefore, was, that, was there nothing before the universe? Because if there was nothing before the universe, then you're saying zero plus zero equals one. If we're not saying that there must have been, so we're saying there must have been something before the universe. What was that thing? But must there have been something before God? No, we're saying that there, it, there's necessarily, it's necessarily the case that there had to be an entity with first. no beginning. That was the first. I see. Yes. Universe. I'm very happy to call that the universe. I would call that the universe as well. You call that God? Which is adding another record. You're calling it the universe. Well, I've said to this young man, Oliver. I might, I would, I would say the same. Yeah. I would happily say the same. Yeah. And I might, I might tag you in if that's right because I'm cold and I want to go home, man. Thank you. You, it was great. And Are you going to think about this? Oh, yeah, look, definitely. I'll and I'll be here next Sunday. Oliver, so think you, about this you know. and do one thing for next Sunday, like a homework. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no do, do. Read the Quran. And we read, actually you know, have several in our house. Yeah, go yeah. read, you know what? I'll tell you where to read as well, yeah? Because it's it relates to it. Yeah. Read from chapter 50, 5 0, yeah. Yeah, to chapter 57. And then I'll come back and I'll talk and to you. And you come back and talk to me. No, don't read it from chapter 1. Read it from chapter 50. Chapter 50. To chapter 57. That will take chapter you about 15 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes to read. Thank you very much. Yeah? Could Thank you very much. Come I'll come back me. next Sunday and, and we'll talk again. That's right. <laughs>